This is gonna be your best Listen. podcast ever. <laughs> <laughs> Epicurean, but OFC and pink lemonade's pretty damn good. It'll put your boat in the marsh. <laughs> Jesus did not die, so you could eat yellow number five. <laughs> Excitable. The nose starts off gentle with noticeable sense of grain that takes shape in the form of fresh baked bread. Ma'am, you're in the wrong podcast. <laughs> Educated ish. I have used the term overproof for so long um, without really knowing what it if it was. Yeah, it, because for is me, there a definition officially? Welcome to bitches and bourbon. You. I'm great today. How are you, April? Me too, because we get to talk about vampires. <laughs> <laughs> and as much as talking about whiskey makes me happy, um, which we do have today, and we'll talk about that really quick, but as much as whis- talking about whiskey makes me happy, talking about vampires makes me super happy too. Um, so we'll go ahead and tell you that we're doing the Stranahan's Blue Peak today. That's what's going to accompany us on this Anne Rice interview with a vampire episode two discussion um, is this Stranahan's hands blue peak we've never had it before i haven't even tasted it yet so if you guys will be so amazingly kind um, and be just super patient with me Mm. i got excited Mm -hmm. you know you're not wrong it is a bit more scotchy than some of our other regular whiskeys yes Um, it is a single malt it is from Colorado. It is a single malt whiskey. It is rich and mellow, distilled from, oh, because it's 100% malted barley. I wonder how they dried it. I'd be interested. Anywho, that's what's accompanying us today, but we are not here to talk about whiskey. Not this time. I'm talking about vampires. <laughs> Specifically, we are discussing Anne, uh, excuse me, Anne Rice's vampires. Um, if you have missed out, um, real quick recap. This is Interview with the Vampire, written by Anne Rice in 1976. Uh, it was a 1994 movie starring Brad Pitt and Tom Cruise. And now, Rollin Jones has taken it and reworked it and has now made a series on um, AMC. You can get it on AMC, but if you have AMC Plus, you can get all the episodes a week earlier. Um, Just so that you're aware, there will be spoilers. There will be spoilers. But but to be fair, also, I mean, for someone who is really into this already by chance, like episode four has been released for the normal AMC viewers and episode five has been released for those that subscribe to AMC plus. And so we are only on talking about episode two. So I would like to think that if you are already on board, you have already watched episode two by the time this airs. And if you have not go ahead, feel free, push pause and then go watch them and then come back because they really are fantastic. So episode one left us with, um, a, a marriage, so to speak, a, a wedding, if you will, um, in a Catholic church. Yes. That consisted of a priest with his neck ate out and a priest with his head caved in. Actually, a fist went through the back of his head, through the front of his face. That's actually. Yes. And in the midst of all of that, Lestat gave like this huge declaration of love right to 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 louis and he was like i'm so sorry and i love you actually i don't think lestat ever said he was sorry what no. he, what he said was what he said was was i love you and i want you to be all the things that you are and come with me and 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 take this gift and be a vampire with me be my companion i love you yes to which Louis said, okay. When, and now while we watch the rest of this show and we discuss the rest of this book, we have to remember, Louis, Lest, this was consensual. Yes. Lestat asked. And he said, yes. And Louis says, yes. So, now, once we get to episode two, Louis is learning all about his vampire-ness. Yes. Right? His isms. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, well, this is all very interesting. When he learns he can, like, read people's brains. Yes. He's like, wow, that's crazy. And then Lestat says the funniest thing. Lestat says it's not really that hard, and it's actually a little boring because everybody just kind of goes down to, like, one of three things. (laughs) One of three things. (laughs) I want food. 
Yep. I want sex. sex. I want to go home. I want to go home. <laughs> and as, as they're walking through, they're like, yep, that one. Yes. Once this. This one? Yep. That. And then the other one's like, okay, starts veering off, and then, nope, I want to go home. <laughs> and Louis has to do his first kill, and that's when... That's when things start to get a little wonky. Yes. Because the first time Louis kills a person and realizes this is his life now, he starts to have all of these second thoughts. He doesn't want to be a vampire, but he doesn't want to be human either, and he doesn't really want to be alive, and he doesn't want to be dead either. But how do I do this without killing people? (laughs) Right. And let's not... He's still in love with Lestat. Like, there's this... So there becomes all of these things now. Trying to meet these expectations, but still be able to sleep at night with his own conscience. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, and it really starts to dive into one of the main themes of Anne's book. And that is, what does it mean to be... What does it mean to live in your authentic self? Like, what does it mean to do the things that you do to survive? Like, what does it mean to be... I hate to say person because they don't really consider themselves. I guess more it's more over what does it mean to be evil? Like, what does it mean to kind of walk through this world in a different kind of way? And what Rollin Jones has done, we discussed this a little bit in episode one, but we really see it become an issue here, is now where Louis' race was a thing before, it's really a thing now. Because before... Louis was a well-to-do black man in the early 1900s in the red light district in New Orleans. He had a certain amount of privilege that other people of color did not have because of his station in life. Mm -hmm. But he still, um, he was still confined in certain ways because of his race. Yes. Now, he's a vampire. Mm -hmm. Like, he'll kill you. Like, and it'll be fine. So now we have this man that's been subjugated and oppressed all of his life, but now he has this new sense of power that he's never had before, and he's a little angry, right? Like he's 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 kind of moved into this. What did he What did he say? He said, he said, I now had powers and decades of rage to process. Yeah, because I mean, now that you are in a different status, if you will, of your non-humanness or whatever you want to call it and you have more power and not sure what to do with it you're trying to figure out okay so how far can do i let these racial comments go and these jabs go and knowing that i can just take their head off (laughs) evidently we already know the answer to that and it's not that far so there's there's well, initially, I, it was well. No, no, not really, because like the guy that came to talk about um, the building, yes, was very condescending. Yes, and Louis kills him, mm-hmm. right? And he says it was both random and unfortunate that man chose that night to dabble in fuckery. Perfect quote. I, I, <laughs> was both random and unfortunate that he chose that night to dabble in fuckery. So, Louis eats him and doesn't. And and for the very first time, we see Louis with a kill that he does not necessarily feel guilty about. Uh, And then when Lestat is upset about it, Lestat is upset because the man that Louis killed is very high profile and he's afraid that it will bring some kind of scrutiny on them. So... Lestat is angry, and he's like, I can't figure out, Louis, why did you do this? What did he... And Louis said he was disrespectful. And Lestat said, well, what did he say? And Louis said, he said, I did a good job. (laughs) Lestat says, you are a library of confusion. (laughs) But so it gets really interesting because, because we understand what Louis means, when the man said told Louis he was doing a good job, he wasn't he wasn't praising Louis. He was shocked that a person of color could actually run a successful business. When he yes. said you did a good job, he wasn't being supportive, he was being condescending. Right. And and Louis, quite frankly, had just had, had enough. enough of it. Yep. And so and so he ate them. Because this is on top of the years of reflection of what he's had to deal with already. And then like you're trying to take these steps forward, trying to do something productive, and dude wants to be a dick. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. 
I will tell you that there was a point, and this is a big spoiler. So seriously, if you haven't, if you haven't watched it, like this is probably not the one. Well, it would have been for me. Uh, so Louis goes to visit his family, and I knew that if this had happened, I wouldn't have. I was prepared. I was prepared to never watch the show again. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my god, he's gonna eat the baby. He's going. He's going to eat. He's going to eat. It definitely. Baby. It definitely made you wonder. Like as, as as she walked away and like hold the baby I gotta go and, and his teeth come out and yes. I'm like oh god he's and gonna he is eat. fighting and yes. he's gonna eat this baby all the while we have to remember that Louis and Daniel Malloy are still in Dubai in 2022 having this conversation yes and this conversation happens over a seven course meal which is very interesting because then we see Louis <laughs> trying to show Daniel in a very real way who he is as a person by the foods that he eats as he eats the <laughs> rabbit or whatever like. <laughs> But, just grabs a hold of it. And <laughs> but I thought the conversation that happened right before that mm -hmm. was very interesting because you had Daniel Malloy being very kind of judgmental about the rabbit that was or that was a sand fox. Oh, sorry. No, 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 it's fine. But he was being very judgmental about the sand fox that was on his plate. And Louis looks over at him and says, do you think about the rabbit? before you cut into it right. or do you just bite it mm -hmm. and I thought that that was it, again it goes back to that thing that Anne does when she's like when we try to take these boxes of good and evil and like this is good and this is evil this is good this is bad where's and, that line sometimes and Anne said <laughs> and Anne's like but is it mm -hmm. but is it and so that's what I've always found really fascinating about about her work and that really kind of comes through in in these kinds of um in this particular series i thought it was really good yeah it wasn't like he was taking a, a human a, at the dinner table but he did know? remember um damn nick came yeah he in. came and sat down yeah but okay so I, I guess what i meant was as he did the singing fox like it's not he didn't kill him yes I, yeah. yes yes yeah no, he, no, he he didn't. He did not. He did not kill him. That is true. It's like okay, thank you. You Appreciate can go now. You. <laughs> we'll That's see you later. Have a nice day. Have a nice day. There's also a pot. So AMC also does a podcast, yes. and their episodes release the same day as the regular AMC's episodes release. And that that episode is talking about the episode that was released. Correct. Oh Correct. wow. So like, but you they can listen to both at the same time. Do they not do spoilers? No, I, take well, I mean, no. They talk about the episode, so I mean, they tell you at the beginning, "This is episode this." If you okay. haven't seen it yet, this you're gotcha. going to hear things okay. about it here, okay. right? And so, I've listened. I've I've listened to it since its inception, right? I've listened to all the episodes, and I almost hesitate to say how much I'm not. I don't enjoy it. Like I, I just I don't. Yeah. There's something about there's something about the delivery. <sighs> That I, I just I have a hard time warming up. I have a hard time warming up to it, right? Um, she interviewed Sam Reed today. Sam Reed is the actor that plays Lestat, mm -hmm. and as soon as she introduces him as Sam Reed as Lestat, she's like, "I don't even want you to talk to me. You can't be doing that. You're e I, you look so cute, but I know you're just evil." And I think that I, I think that from jump that particular approach takes the whole of the series and kind of surface levels it right to to just nothing it, yeah. it's all it's very it's very superficial because Lestat you can't just call Lestat evil you have to talk about what your what your definition of evil is in order to say you fit this definition of evil yeah because the definition of evil varies tremendously from one household to another, from one person to another, oftentimes. I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, there's usually some umbrella-type things that usually fall under a majority of people's definition of evil. But there's a lot of gray lines or, you know, things that are But, but more is there really? Because they've really... I, it depends on how you think about it, right? If you think about, the, if you think about them as humans, that's one thing. And if you think of vampires as a human, that's one thing. If you think of vampires as a different type of human, that's another thing. Right. But if you think of vampires and humans as completely and totally 180 out from each other, right. then you have a completely different conversation altogether. Because now what you have is humans who are just 
we think it's terrible that people die because we're just so fucking used to being the top of the food chain. Right. And now we're just not. There's a new apex predator out there that now has you. Yes. And so now is that evil? If, a, if, if, if you walk through the swamp and an alligator eats you, <laughs> is the alligator evil? Right. Or is the alligator just doing what a fucking alligator does? Right. So, like, is the vampire evil or is the am- vampire just doing what the vampire does? Right? Yeah. So I, I think that's the thing. I think that's the thing about the podcast that just kind of, and I've listened to, a, I've, I've listened to all of them. I really liked listening to Jordan Anderson. We'll talk about that on the ne- next episode. Honestly, Bailey Bass, I didn't like that episode so much, talking to her. Like, I, I, guess, I guess because I watched the behind the scenes and I saw the respect that Rollin Jones had for Anne Rice's body of work and the story that she was telling and the, and the deeper themes and the deeper meaning that she was bringing and, and how he really wanted to do that, too. I guess listening to it kind of fluffed yeah. is, 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 is a little jarring for me, Yeah, I guess is what I would say. But I still love the show. Yeah, I've, I'm enjoying it. But I, I don't know. I don't know that the. I don't know that the podcast is my favorite. I'm I, trying. I do, think, I do think that it would be beneficial for me to find the time to be able to watch the episodes more than once, just because. Like it. I mean, as with everything, like there's so much that you can get out of watching something again, right? Um, especially if you know you're in a typical household and there's distractions and. <laughs> well, I'll tell <laughs> you, you know, just life. I, I know you're absolutely right because I went so far as to uh, I, I read the book again. Mm-hmm. And there was a lot of things I had forgotten. The kids and I, uh, three, four nights ago, watched the movie again. <laughs> <laughs> Poor thing. That was a little pain. Watching the movie was a little, it was a little painful. Like, I'm just not a big fan of the movie. I'm still not a big fan of the movie. I will tell you this. I enjoyed it more this time than I enjoyed it the first time. Because I've only watched it twice because I think it sucks. Um, and it's not a movie I'll, I'll watch over and over again. Uh, but I will say that I did I did enjoy it better this time than I did the first time I, I watched mean, just it. Just a little more appreciation, or I think I'm just older. I think well, I'm older. Okay. I think I know more about Anne Rice, and I think I know more about the backstory of when she wrote the book that I can appreciate more um, why she liked the movie. Whereas before, I was like. Lestat, I love him. Lestat, Lestat, he's my man. <laughs> if he can't do it, nobody can, right? And yes. Lestat is wonderful, and he was just completely played terribly. Louis was ta- played terribly. Yeah. Uh, and so I guess I was just, I, my 17-year-old self was, a, or 18-year-old self was offended. Yeah. Right? I so get that. I think that's probably what it was. Uh, maybe, and, I should, maybe I should make myself watch it again, because, I mean, it's been... Probably just as long since I've watched it. I'll tell you this. The kids loved it. The, really? The kids loved the movie. Kids loved the movie. Yeah. Interesting. Kids are loving the series. Well, I mean, I, I believe... I, I'm not so surprised about that part as I am about them loving the movie. Yeah, the kids love the series. They're enjoying that very much. Um, so, yeah. So, season... So, episode two was a win. I'm really liking Miss Williams a lot. <laughs> She was the one that I squirt my catfish dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't she a vision? Yes. <laughs> um, oh, and then, the, oh, so, so back to episode two real quick, and then we'll wrap it all up. I really liked the inclusion of the opera. Yes. I thought it gave us insight into Lestat that we did not have before, and I think it gave Louis insight into Lestat that he didn't yes. have before. Uh, and that was Louis Lestat line was art, mm-hmm. talent. So the I really, appreciation, yes, like appreciation for the Correct. the the good and <laughs> the disgust for the what the fuck are you doing on yeah. the stage right now? <laughs> yes, yes, uh, uh, just a, an appreciation of the beautiful, and that is going to get. Imp- I don't know when that's going to get important. I know in the book that idea of art. As beautiful and a particular type of art, beautiful being beautiful, that idea is going to get really important. 
I'm not giving any spoilers. I'm not yeah. going that far. I will just tell you this. The idea that of art and being able to appreciate the art of your time is going to become pretty important. Uh, so I appreciated that they went ahead and put that out yes. there. Early uh, on. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I mean, when you've got all the time in the world, <laughs> that, that's one of the fine things that you can appreciate and it remain. Like just thinking about... Not thinking about specific episodes or whatever, but just thinking about art appreciation in general. And well, I did. I liked the way I liked the way that they're really going deep in these first two episodes on the humanity of the thing, mm-hmm. right? Because you have Louis doing what Louis does and having his battle with being a vampire now, and what does that mean? You have Lestat, who was just fuck it, I'm a vampire. I do what I want to do, right? Uh, this and, is what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> and then at the same time, we also have Daniel as the reporter. Questioning. <laughs> well, he has to, yes. right? Because at first, before he came to Dubai, he was just an old guy with Parkinson's. Right. Now, he's an old guy with Parkinson's looking in the face of mortality. Yes. And not just mortality, but a mortality that can be gifted. Right. Right? That that mortality that you theoretically could have access to. How much discomfort are you in right now? <laughs> and and is it worth it? Yes. Like, do you want to live forever? Like, is that even a thing you right. want to do? And is that better than living a full life and then dying? Or is it not? And, like, and then all of those different kind of things. Like, all of that humanity is coming into play. Yeah. And I love the way that they ended episode two. With the dessert. And for the first time, Louie eats the same thing that Daniel eats. Mm -hmm. And Daniel says, what does that taste like to you? And Louie says, like all human food, paste. Yes. Soap. But he tries to have, he said, I try to have one human meal a week to maintain the thread. Yes. Yes. I thought that was a hugely, I thought that was a huge line packed with significance. Yes. Right? And then, for the first time. Because, I mean, and that's by choice. It's not because that's what's being modeled for him. And then, the, for the first time, Daniel actually reciprocates these, these personal anecdotes, right? Daniel says, this was the dessert I had right after I proposed to my first wife. Mm-hmm. Half of her eyebrow was blonde, and she used to dye it so it would look the same. I liked it better when she left it alone. Yes. Like, that little, like, it's those little things that are pointing to, pointing to what we could call, if we wanted to, benchmarks of humanity. But do not have to point to or notice at all as anything. Right. It's just going to have to depend now on how are you separating what life is, what meaning is, what purpose is, what moral is, what mm. just is. Right. And this is only an episode two, y'all. <laughs> two. <coughs> so I already know what happens in episode three, and I have done, I'm so proud of me, I haven't done one thing to tell y'all about anything that's happened in episode three, and I'm so excited about all that. Huh? How many so if you subscribe, you have access to f- to episode five. If you don't subscribe, like me, you have episode you have episode four. Gotcha. Yes. I made Ted turn it off yesterday. I was like, I don't want to watch it. I got to start from the beginning. You do absolutely yes. have to start from the beginning. Most definitively. Yes. You absolutely have to start from the beginning. Yeah. I, and and if if you were asking me, you would watch episode one. Immediately watch the forty-five minute bonus behind the scenes episode, and then watch episode two. That's where I would put the behind the scene. You won't un- the, the behind the scenes won't mean anything to you if you watch it first, right. and you'll miss so much if you wait any longer. Like that behind the scenes belongs right in between episode one and two. That's absolutely where I would watch it. All right. We have to go do book club now. Yep. I think we are good. we got to go do book club now. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us. And next time it'll be episode three of Vampires. Or it might be a book. Or it might be bourbon. Or it might be whiskey. Or it might be all of them. Uh-uh. <laughs> if I, look. If you know, call me and tell me. Until next time. Until next time.
Thanks for hanging out with Ape and Reba on this episode of Bitches and Bourbon. Make sure to check out the links in the show notes, and we look forward to hearing from you. Until next time, here's to bad bitches and good bourbon. Cheers. I mean, you have to like spicy pickle. Mm-hmm.